All right, guys. So I'm gonna start off by saying this episode's really lame, and I do apologize. I've been trying to put out the best content possible for you guys lately, and I feel like this episode is below par. Although this episode was a fail, a lot of important things happened in it, kind of. And so I wanted to still show you guys, but let you understand, like, sometimes when you work on cars, it's just not a good day and just stuff doesn't work out. But that's that, that's working on cars. And when it does work out, it's awesome and it's really fun and exciting. And then when it doesn't, it sucks. This weekend, I started off by trying to fix my dashboard. Okay, so I tried to patch these cracks with um, amazing gunk or something like that, or goop. And because it doesn't harden as hard as like Bondo would, I know a lot of people use Bondo, and I wanted something that would kind of more flex with it, which it actually feels really good. However, it did not um, it did not cover as well as I would like, and when I went to sand it down, it just peeled out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish sanding it down, and I'm going to take my Dremel and try to get these cracks as far down as possible. And then after that, we'll lay down the Bondo. So to start off fixing my dashboard, the way I did it is I took a wire attachment on my drill and just tried to dig out the cracks as best as I could. The reason why is because when it cracks, it kind of it has like a level surface and then where the crack starts, it bumps up, then dips down where the crack is and then bumps back up and then levels out again. So if you just dig out the whole crack, then you have just a big hole and if you fill that up with Bondo and you do a good job, then it will be a perfectly level surface. So that's what I did. A few layers of Bondo and a bunch of sanding and then cleaning up and prepping it, I tried to vinyl wrap it. By the way, um, I ran out of memory on my memory card so I had to find some uh, old videos that didn't get removed when I uploaded them. And one of them was me laying down the vinyl wrap. So just imagine me like laying this down over a, a dashboard and just messing it all up. That's, that's the clip you missed out on, okay? So, yeah, back to the video. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that this is the best way to redo your dashboard because if you do it well, it will look just like the factory dashboard. It's the same type of material that they used and it looks perfect. However, I suck at vinyl wrap. I know I did it wrong. The way that you're supposed to do is peel the back off, slowly press it down, hit it up with a heat gun, stretch it, stuff like that. I tried that. It's really hard to do by yourself. So I tried to just peel the whole back off lay it down lightly and then do that same type of thing um, but it just wasn't working out so it turned out like garbage and I ended up just having to peel it off and that's a real bummer because I was like $30 worth of vinyl wrap that's down the drain it was really cheap vinyl wrap it wasn't good stuff so if I bought higher quality stuff I think I could have saved it however this stuff was not the highest of quality so after that it was time to do the only thing I've probably enjoyed this weekend which was to put my freshly painted rims back on my car with their new lug nuts, and I'll show you how that turned out. Found a use for this table vise. Cell phone holder, no big deal. All right, so if you guys watch all my videos, before Ilta Trill, I mentioned that I was gonna start filming Ilta Trill again. I had this little black box, and in this dusty little black box, I said was my, my secret weapon um, that's gonna get all the, all the Instagram posts and all the reshares and all the likes. Um, so, today is the day you find out what is in this box. Alright, 
because it's time to put these bad boys back in the car. If you guys don't know, I painted it black, but in the sun, it has a um, like a goldish flake to it. It's oil rubbed bronze um, from Rust-Oleum. So when it's on the car, you'll see it. Also, I have a picture on my Instagram and Facebook that you guys can check out where I shot it with a flash and you get to really see the sparkle in it. It looks really nice. So it's time to put these babies back on the car. This is my secret weapon. Hope you guys are ready for this. Boom. Neochrome spike lug nuts. So that, I think, looks so sick. I love the new lug nuts. I love the rims. I love the way they turned out. I think they turned out amazing. Um, I love the way the whole car looks with those rims on it. And uh, I know a lot of people are gonna hate on the lug nuts, but me personally, I think it looks like a modern day, uh, just a modern day hot rod, and it looks super sick, and I love it. So um, that's that. I think it looks awesome. It's my car. I do what I want. Um, after I saw the rims painted on the car, I wanted to paint the whole car that color. So as you know, I bought it in a rattle can, but rust does sell that paint in a gallon tub. So I could, in theory, thin it out and run it through my air compressor and spray that color on my car. So it's a toss up right now between painting the car gloss black, satin black, or oil rub bronze. And I'm really leaning towards oil rub bronze. So I wanna get your guys' opinion on that. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think because I'm really excited for that. With that being said, my second favorite part of this weekend was the mailman dropping off all my new car parts. So, time for everybody's favorite segment, mail time, of course. So let's see what we got. First things first, let's go with the black package. Yes. So, we got this nice little postcard. More importantly, our cheap Chinese quick release. Boom. So, for those of you that don't know, my car already has a quick release on it, but it's really annoying. This one's much faster. Um, it, this one's poorly put together because it's a Chinese ripoff off eBay for, I think, like 10 bucks, something like that. So, yeah, this one's not as good as the one I have, but it's a lot quicker. So. There's that. Next thing we got is my uh, SR20 igniter, um, which I just ordered like yesterday. So that's really weird that that already came in. Um, and I'm actually missing a package still. Um, I don't know which one I'm missing though. I got both my Chinese things. My damn motor mounts. Those need to come in still. All right. Next, straight from China, is my Super JDM drifting steering wheel. Uh, this thing cost $25 online, and I literally bought it just because it was gold, and it was super, super cheap. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this ricer centerpiece right here, and I might repaint these gold spokes to better match the gold uh, up here, and like the alignment thing, so I might be doing that. 
But I think this with my new Neo Chrome quick release is gonna look pretty sick. So definitely like it for the price. I mean, what are you gonna do? So this next thing is very important to me. It's my favorite, favorite shipment I've gotten out of all of these. It's the most important mod to me. It's a mod I've wanted to do to my car since I started watching Fast and the Furious back in the day and I started playing Need for Speed Underground 2. A lot of people are bringing it back. There's a lot of Instagram dudes that are rocking it. Adam LZ just did it to his car. And that is Underglow Lights. So hit up Diode Dynamics because they by far have probably the easiest, best to set up lighting kit. And I am so stoked to put these on my car. And um, I've never done anything like this before. I'm not really good with wiring. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. But I'm not going to be putting that on anytime soon because I don't have the, the, uh, the battery in or anything like that. I have to do the battery relocation and charge up a battery before I can actually put these on. Um, and it's also like a thousand degrees outside. So but I'm really excited. I'm super stoked for this. This is going to be the sickest thing that I've done in my car so far. Okay, so yesterday... <clears throat> After I recorded our mail time segment, apparently the post the postman wasn't done delivering stuff. So I got some more stuff in the mail. We got this, which you can see right here what it is. It's an SR20 cams. So I already cut it open as soon as I got them to make sure that they look good. And they do. These are just OEM cams out of an SR20. However, my other ones are pretty, um, like, temperature scarred or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called. However, these new ones look, like, basically brand new. Like, these ones don't have a lot of aggressive miles on them at all. So, that's why I bought these. I got them for 100 bucks. So that is not bad. And that was already um, in the budget when I told you guys the budget of the last video. Something else I got delivered uh, a while ago. Oh, we got this too. So I went to my buddy's house, gave him $120, and I got this, which is a nice like little short radiator, or not radiator, intercooler. So um, I'm going to be running this off to one side, and then I'm thinking about doing an oil cooler and uh, power steering and transmission cooler and all that stuff next to it because this thing is it's tiny but it's super well built and thick it's really thick so that is sick we got that and we got this new turbo that actually spins this time and has no shaft play so um, that's gonna be sick so now we have our turbo we have our intercooler and the thing I was reaching down here for we also got boom over fenders so so now we have a lot more stuff so the over fenders will be going on next week's episode um, because I'm going to do a little bit more research before I just start cutting away at my fenders and plus I have to get out there and adjust the wheels to the height that I want them to stay at. So when I put the over fenders on, uh, I get good looking fitment, but also functional um, fitment as well. So I gotta do that still. So these will be going on in next week's episode. I also picked up a clutch. I have a power steering line on its way. Uh, motor mounts are on its way. I got my uh, coil packs on the way. Got a boost gauge on the way. Now, we do have a ton of parts in the garage that need to go onto the car. So, the way that this, the next couple weeks are gonna work out is my episodes may be late. They may not be every single week. And the reason why is I have a lot to do. And in my personal life, I'm switching job positions. So I'm working, this next week I'm working seven days straight. Um, and I just, my hours are nuts. They only give me like one day off at a time. So I don't have the time to work on the car as much as I'd like, and I have a lot of stuff to do to the car. So in the next episode, my goal is 
to have the entire car back together um, minus the motor and the rebuild and all that. So I want to have all the interior components back in the car, including the dashboard, hopefully. I want to have all my new like steering wheels, my new shift knob, all that stuff on the car. Well, not the shift knob because I don't have the transmission in. But my steering wheel and all that stuff back in the car. I want to have all these spare tires out of my garage. I want to have my over fenders on the car. I want to have the car lowered and sitting the way that I want it to look. And I want all that stuff wrapped up because I now have everything I need to do the rebuild on the motor and I want to get that started and get that finished because that is the heart of this build and it needs to be done because I got a lot of parts with limited warranties or no warranties and I need to know if they all work. So I need to get this motor rebuilt so I can plug it all in and pray to God that everything works out fine and it starts right up. So that's how the channel is going to look for the next couple weeks is I may not have a video or I might have like a a non ilta trail video and the ilta trail videos may not be every single week but the only reason why is because i'm trying to bring you guys the best content available and no more videos like this one where it's just a disappointment so next video we're wrapping up the car we're getting that back to where all the stuff's out of my garage and back into the car the week after that we are starting the rebuild on the motor and i'm super excited so again I am so sorry to you guys for this video. I know it was a huge letdown. And if you still did watch this video and stuck around to the end, let me know down below. And I really do appreciate it. You guys are the best, the best subscribers I could ever ask for. The support has been killing it lately. You guys are the best. And uh, yeah, just keep hitting like, subscribing, liking my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. If you want, you can buy one of my t-shirts. This is one of my like throwaway t-shirts from my other company. Um, but yeah, you could buy one of my t-shirts, you can hit the little eye up in the corner and donate. Um, there's a lots of ways that you can support. The most one is just uh, turning off ad block. I really appreciate that. Um, and that's that. So again, so sorry guys. I know this week sucked, but that's just how life goes in a garage sometimes. So, peace.